Morales here at Primary Residential Mortgage Inc. This is a national event uh, being uh, presented to uh, just about every state that's out there. We've already kind of taken, taken a roll call and we've got folks here from uh, all over the country, north and south, east and west, Hawaii to Florida. We've got some people up there in uh, the Oregon, Washington area, all the way down to Texas and uh, Georgia and everywhere across the country. So we're all very, very grateful that you're able to join us, that you've been able to uh, take some time today to, to be with us. We've got a lot of people here from uh, other mortgage companies. We've got people here from uh, that are realtors, financial planners. We have homeowners, regular homeowners here who are just looking to get information. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, PRMI team members as well. Thank you for being here. Uh, just a quick story. A little bit about me and reverse mortgages. Um, my family, my parents got a reverse mortgage several years back, and it has been one of the best things ever. Uh, for them, it was just a matter of having sort of a, a, a security uh, net, a blank security blanket sitting there, this kind of standby line of credit. Uh, and it's worked out great. My mom has since passed away. And so it's been a godsend for my dad and, um, and his um, living situation and where he's at. And it's just something he doesn't have to worry about, right? Trying to make a mortgage payment. Uh, and that's just one of the many, many stories that we are hearing from um, all over the country. Really, PRMI does business in just about every state. So we are uh, able to help lots and lots of people all over the country and um, hear lots of stories. I could probably spend a whole hour just telling you stories of people's situations. So. All right, let me go ahead and introduce our fantastic speaker. Uh, you're going to grow to love him. Uh, you will not forget his face. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. And, you know, and uh, he has a very distinguishing feature that, uh, that uh, people recognize him by in, in many places. So uh, our speaker today is Stephen J. Sless. He's a certified long-term care professional and a reverse mortgage industry veteran. Uh, he is the president of uh, the reverse mortgage division here at Primary Residential Mortgage. And he has recently been, been named to as the industry game changer uh, by Yahoo Finance. So if you follow any of the uh, financial publications, uh, Mr. Steven J. Slez has been recognized multiple times. And he is regarded to as the uh, as the go-to housing wealth expert. You've probably seen him uh, in several places uh, around uh, social media or doing uh, morning news shows or uh, other advertising and whatnot. He is a very well-known and respected, regarded person in the reverse mortgage space. He's been in the mortgage space as a whole for 20 years. So you're in good hands with Steven. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it over to you, Steven. Take it from here and uh, we'll talk to you <clears throat> here again. Thank you so much, George. And thank you to everybody that's here with us today. Welcome to How Reverse Mortgages Work, Home Equity Solutions for a Better Retirement. My name again is Stephen Sless. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. It's a pleasure to be with everybody here today. Um, we're going to, this hour is going to go by pretty quickly. Uh, I want to be appreciative of, um, of course, appreciative of all of you for coming uh, I want to be very respectful of your time. We have a lot of financial advisors on today, a lot of realtors on today, uh, certified long-term care professionals such as myself, long-term care insurance producers, a lot of busy professionals, and a lot of you at home uh, at three o'clock Eastern sitting in, your fr in front of your computer, hopefully to gain a much better understanding of reverse mortgages and how they work. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started. And let's talk about why we're here today. We are here because uh, there's been a lot of talk lately uh, of inflation and the rising cost of consumer goods, rising gas prices. And, and what does that mean for folks that are either nearing retirement or those that are already in retirement, perhaps on a fixed income, worried about perhaps outliving their money? Right, you've seen over the past few years, a lot of you have seen your retirement accounts go up quite a bit, uh, and you've been very excited about the gains that you've seen. And that may not be the case today, uh, here in 2022, 
with all the craziness and the turmoil we have going on in the uh, economy right now. However, there is an unbelievable amount of housing wealth for folks 62 plus, and we're going to get into that in a moment. Um, you know, what we're dealing with in the economy right now is very serious, right? You have a lot of folks that have a lot of equity in their home, but they don't necessarily have a lot of cash in the bank. We're going to talk about ways today that a reverse mortgage, in particular, can be used to help you live a better retirement lifestyle. There is over $11.12 trillion, trillion with a T, of untapped housing wealth, home equity, for folks 62 plus in the United States. And that home equity is, in most cases, the largest portion of their net worth. Perhaps that's the largest portion of your net worth. Understanding how to strategically and tax efficiently leverage that equity with a reverse mortgage to create a better retirement, well, it may just be the key to you living a more comfortable and a better retirement lifestyle. Again, we have unprecedented housing wealth levels, but here's a few stats to consider, jumping right in. There are 74% of Americans are falling short of their retirement needs by the age of 62, 74%. 70% of these folks, and maybe you out there alone, will require some level of long-term or extended care during your lifetime. Yet less than 3% of people are actually covered in the event of a long-term or an extended care event. Most folks would be taken care of by unpaid family members. Um, and, and a long-term care event, I mean, I, I, I took my CLTC uh, course several years ago. I have the certification in long-term care. I don't sell insurance. The reason that I got the certification is just to have a deeper and a better understanding of one, the care needs of aging homeowners. And two, right, what does long-term care insurance cover? What does Medicaid cover? What does Medicare cover? Um, and and, I, and I, I was shocked when I learned that there are less than 3% of folks in America covered in the event of long-term care. So what would you do, right? If you're on or with us today um, and you don't have a plan for long-term care, whether you're of age to take out a reverse mortgage or not, right? What would your plan be? Would it be to have unpaid, unskilled family take care of you? Or do you have a plan to get the care that you need, the premium care that you need and would want during the course of the rest of your life? And again, over $11.12 trillion in untapped home equity sitting out there for a lot of folks that are struggling right now. You know, And if you're looking at your retirement accounts and you're wondering, how am I, am I going to outlive my nest egg, right? Do I need to alter my lifestyle? Do I need to perhaps enter back into the workforce just to be able to get by because your accounts are going this way, right? However, your home equity is going this way. And, and that home equity, that housing wealth, your home is in most cases your largest asset. And we're going to teach you here today how to best use that home with a reverse mortgage to create a better retirement lifestyle. All right, what is in store for today? You all took the time out of your day to join us. We're very grateful and very appreciative, but let's get into why you're here, what we're gonna learn. The first thing that we're gonna learn is we're gonna discover reverse mortgage basics. What are reverse mortgages and how do they really work? We're gonna talk also about the evolution of reverse mortgages, where we've been in the industry, where reverse mortgages have been, how they've been used, for the past four decades and how they're used today. And that's key because how reverse mortgages are used today is vastly different than how reverse mortgages were used 20, 30, even 40 years ago. They've been out for quite some time. We're gonna talk about housing wealth concepts and strategies designed to sustain a better retirement lifestyle with better quality of life as well. We're going to talk about the different types of reverse mortgages. Yes, there are more than one type of reverse mortgages. There's a lot of options to choose from, and we're going to cover them as well. And we're going to talk about the facts. We're going to decipher the myths from realities. We've all heard these myths and rumors and innuendo. innuendo. We're going to talk about the myths, and then we're going to talk about the facts today. 
And we'll end today's presentation with a lively Q&A. And I'm going to try to go through some of these other slides pretty quickly because I do want to leave a good 10 minutes or so for Q&A. We, when we do these presentations, we always have a lot of questions towards the end of our presentation. Today, what you're going to leave with is one, you're going to gain a better understanding of today's reverse mortgages. And you're going to hear me reference today's reverse mortgages because again, they're vastly different today than they were in years past. We're going to talk about ways to optimize your retirement or if you're a financial advisor or a realtor or a financial professional, ways to help optimize your client's retirement lifestyle. You're gonna get answers today. You're gonna to get answers to all your burning questions about reverse mortgages. So if you're somebody that has either looked into reverse mortgages in the past, or you've heard about reverse mortgages in the past, but you never really took the time to dive into it and become informed and empowered and educated, Today is the day. Thank you for being here. You are going to get answers and you will become empowered. Now, the reason that everybody is here today, let's get in finally to reverse mortgage basics. What are reverse mortgages? You may have heard the acronym HECM or Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. A HECM is the government reverse mortgage, right? There are various different types of reverse mortgages, but a HECM is really a reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgage is actually a slang term for HECM, which stands again for home equity conversion mortgage. These are government insured by the FHA, right? So if you see the acronym HECM, you know that is the FHA's version of reverse mortgage loans. We're Reverse mortgages have federal oversight and regulations. They are some of the most heavily regulated uh, mortgage products on the market. I would argue the most heavily regulated mortgage products on the market. Um, they're with oversight, federal oversight by FDIC, HUD, CFPB. I mean, you, the list goes on. These are very heavily regulated loans. Um, on HECMs, HECMs have a minimum age requirement of 62 all right, any borrower on the HECM loan must be 62, whereas now there are proprietary reverse mortgage products, non-government reverse mortgage products. And for those, in many states, the borrower only has to be age 55, right? So we've actually eliminated the, the term senior from our vocabulary. These are no longer loans for seniors. Um, these are loans for middle-aged Americans that happen to have the, the vast majority of their wealth locked between their four walls, and they can leverage that equity with a reverse mortgage. But no longer are these loans for, you know, for, for what we would consider old folks back in the day, right? When I got into the reverse mortgage space, the average age of, of a reverse mortgage client was 82. The average age of our client today is 62. So that's a, that's a big difference. Folks, as soon as they qualify, are now contacting us and they're taking out a reverse mortgage. Um, and that's really brought the minimum age down quite a bit over the years. With a reverse mortgage, whether it's a proprietary reverse mortgage or whether it's a government reverse mortgage, general rule of thumb is that homeowners can access roughly 50% of their equity, okay? Now, there's other mortgage loan products that will allow you to access a lot more. Reverse mortgages, you can access about 50%. And as we go through today's presentation, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons, right? If you're looking to leverage your home equity, um, how should you do it? There's a variety of ways. Reverse mortgages just happen to be one of those ways. Um, and these loans allow you to access roughly 50% of the value of your home with deferred and flexible repayment options. So what does that mean? It means that with a reverse mortgage, you can make a payment. You can, if you want to. You can treat it like any other type of mortgage. And if you make a payment, it's going to bring down the balance of the loan. You have a lot of folks that take out a reverse mortgage, and they're they're financially comfortable today, right? But they're they're taking this out as a measure of planning to ensure that they're always going to be comfortable. They always have an enhanced retirement lifestyle. But they don't necessarily need the money today. Cash flow wise, they're doing all right, and they decide to make monthly mortgage payments. You can make a payment of any denomination at any time that you want. There is no prepayment pre penalty on reverse mortgages, um, or you can choose not to make payments, to forego or to defer payback until you leave the home. 
But the reverse mortgage is unique in that it is the only product on the market that allows you that flexibility. If you want to make a monthly mortgage payment, you can. But if you just don't want to, or you find that you no longer can, or, or just can't, you know, don't want to make that payment anymore, you don't have to. And you can just stop making mortgage payments. Um, there's not going to be a bill that comes to the house every month, right? This is not a loan for the government to take your home or the bank to take your home. This flexibility is a part of the reverse mortgage. Um, that is unique. No other mortgage product offers you that flexibility. There is no mandatory monthly mortgage payment. Right. So we're going to talk about ways to access money, but all those ways that you can access money from your home, well, those come with a, a mandatory mortgage payment. And if you don't make that mortgage payment, the bank's going to send you a nasty letter in the mail. And if you don't make it for three, four months in a row, they're going to come take your home. With a reverse mortgage, that's not the case. You never have to make a mortgage payment, but you do have that flexibility in the event that you wanted to. So a lot of folks have heard about reverse mortgages and and when you bring up reverse mortgages with anybody these days, you most people will have this visceral reaction to reverse mortgages. Um, and I think it's important before we dive into the ways to use a reverse mortgage and how you take the money, let's just talk a moment about the evolution of reverse mortgages. You see, reverse mortgages have actually been around since the early 1960s. They were developed to allow folks that had a reasonable amount of wealth in their home to, to get some of that wealth. But there was very little government oversight, actually no government oversight at that point, very little regulation. It really wasn't until the uh, the late 1980s and the Reagan administration that the government became involved and started to insure reverse mortgage loans through the FHA. Um, during this time, again, re reverse mortgages were very, uh, you, you know, they, they were used perhaps not the best way. Um, they were used more as a loan of last resort, where folks that were either very destitute or they had tapped out all their other retirement assets and income, they turned to the equity in their home. Oftentimes, the home was viewed during these days as a, an untouchable asset, right? It was a very emotional asset. Oftentimes, homes were passed down from generation to generation. Um, and it was an asset where, you know, look, this is the last thing I'm going to do. If I absolutely... And, and, and destitute, broke, I'm out of money, sure, I'll turn to a reverse mortgage. And you had a lot of folks that perhaps should have sold the home or perhaps should have looked for alternative options to increase their cash flow and, and to, to be able to get by. Instead, they took out reverse mortgages. And reverse mortgages at that point acted as nothing more than a Band-Aid on a, on a much more open wound. Um, it, it was a short-term solution to, to creating some cash flow. And a lot of those folks, unfortunately, defaulted on their requirements of the loan. You have three require requirements with a reverse mortgage loan. You have to pay your taxes, you have to pay your homeowner's insurance, and you got to maintain the home. Well, a lot of these folks that weren't of means, they had used all their retirement money, they took out a reverse mortgage and used all of that money, found themselves in a position where they could no longer afford the taxes or they could no longer afford the insurance. And unfortunately, a lot of those folks did lose their home. They were foreclosed on. Now, they weren't foreclosed on, and this is important to point out, they weren't foreclosed on because they didn't make their mortgage payment or they were late for 90 days or 120 days. No, they were foreclosed on because the county foreclosed on them or the state or the local municipality for them defaulting on their taxes or defaulting on their insurance, right? So it's not because they had a reverse mortgage that they were foreclosed on. They just happened to have a reverse mortgage while... They also could not afford to pay, in those, in most cases, the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance. So in 2015, the government got involved, and, and there's been a lot of oversight. There's been government safeguards. There's been regulatory actions taken. Um, and, and there's also been, during this time, a lot of advanced research by some of the best and brightest financial minds in the country. Wade Fowl, Jamie Hopkins, Tom Hegna, just to name a few. Through their research and through efforts from the American College of Financial Services and other entities, uh, NAFA, through their research, they discovered that the whole concept and the strategy of using housing wealth as a last resort is a flawed concept. In fact, incorporating the housing wealth into a well-rounded, comprehensive financial strategy where 
you know, the housing wealth is just another piece of the puzzle instead of that wealth being untouched, instead of that sitting outside of the retirement plan. Let's now bring housing wealth, this home equity, this $11.2 trillion that's out there. Let's bring that into the retirement equation. And then let's do some research and see what that does to the overall picture of one's retirement account. And through their research, what they discovered is this. In order to have a comprehensive financial plan, particularly in today's day and age, in today's market, you have to use all of someone's assets instead of just a few. And leaving housing wealth as a separate part outside of the equation doesn't make much sense. It's not prudent, especially if you're a financial advisor, right? Is it prudent to ignore your client's largest asset? I would argue no. And so reverse mortgages not only have become safer because there's been more government involvement and more safeguards put into place to protect borrowers, non-borrowing spouses, there are a lot of protections, but there's also been a, a mind shift in the way that reverse mortgages are used. Today, reverse mortgages are used as a piece of the puzzle, as a part of the overall comprehensive plan to increase cash flow, mitigate sequence of returns risk, and help folks to leverage their largest asset and incorporate that asset into their retirement plan. So we talked about all these safeguards. One safeguard in particular is when it comes to a non-borrowing spouse. That non-borrowing spouse protection was put into play, I believe it was 2013 or 2014. Um, so now if you have a spouse that is younger than the qualifying age, they can be considered a non-borrowing spouse um, and they don't have to be taken off of Title, they're, they're, they're protected. Um, there's a lot of safeguards to make sure that they don't lose the home and they have the access to still own the home if the qualifying spouse were to pass on later in life. So post-2015, reverse mortgages have become a widely accepted financial tool looked at by financial advisors, by realtors. We're going to get into the purchase in a few moments, how to purchase a home with a reverse mortgage. Um, but they're looked at as a widely accepted financial tool, still not quite in the mainstream media. There's still a lot of strides to be made. Uh, I try my best to spread the gospel of reverse mortgages, so to speak, to the mainstream media to get the word out there that, hey, look, reverse mortgages aren't for everyone, but they are for a lot of folks who perhaps would not think that they're for them, um, who have maybe viewed reverse mortgages differently in the past or perhaps heard some of the negative uh, misconceptions or myths as opposed to the realities. So folks, there's a retirement crisis in America right now. A lot of folks are falling short of their retirement needs. In fact, 74% of retirees will fall short of their income needs by the age of 62. So there's a storm on the horizon. You have 10,000 people per day turning 62 in this country. 70% of those, we had this slide before, 70%, 7 out of 10, are going to require long-term or extended care in their lifetime. And the average cost of health care has soared in recent years. I think it's costing a healthy couple $363,000 in their retirement. That's the average healthy couple. What about a not-so-healthy couple, right? What is health care going to cost for them? The median age, I mean, the median... <laughs> cost of unskilled care for long-term care needs, just unskilled care, just to have somebody come in your home and take care of mom or dad or your grandpa or uncle, whoever it is, over $4,000 per month. And that's projected to be over $8,000 a month in the coming years. And again, there's less than 3% of folks that are protected in the event of a long-term care event. There's all these different risks in retirement. You have market risk, taxation risk, inflation risk, withdrawal rate risk. We're seeing a lot of folks um, deal with withdrawal rate risk and sequence of returns risk right now. Um, they're having to pull more from their investment portfolio than their retirement plan allows. And that is minimizing or diminishing future growth. And so folks, when, when you have a retirement account that is diminishing, right? It's suffering in the market right now. You're not seeing these gains that you've seen in recent years. The last thing that you want to do is pull money from that depleting account. And now that account is getting hit twice. Instead, incorporating housing wealth into the equation 
and, and limiting your withdrawal rate from your investment portfolio could be a way to help your overall retirement nest egg last a whole heck of a lot longer. And the number one risk of all folks is longevity, right? There's no number. Nobody has a number of, hey, you're going to live until your age 89 or, or 92. We don't know. This is a moving target. And so not only do you need money now, right, especially if you're a younger retiree, you, you need to get through this inflationary period. You need to get through this market, this economy. But you also got to think, look, people are living longer nowadays. Folks are living until age 100. How are we going to ensure that we're not going to outlive our money? And we come to the housing wealth solution. We here at PRMI are committed to being a part of the solution to this retirement crisis that we're in by showing our clients, by holding events like this, by networking with financial advisors and other professionals who have folks of the retirement age so we can spread the word of how housing wealth, particularly with a reverse mortgage, can play a vital role in helping America live, create, sustain, and live a better retirement. Folks, the home is where the wealth is. Sure, it's where memories are made and it's where the heart is, but the home is where 74% of the average American retirees' net worth lies. And so, folks, it only makes sense to incorporate that wealth into the retirement plan. And here's a variety of ways that you can do so. Okay, so we talked about this $11.2 trillion in housing wealth, but how do we accept, how do we access that money? The first way is with a cash out refinance, right? Everybody knows what a cash out refinance is. Um, we offer them here at PRMI. Uh, if you're looking for one, I highly recommend a PRMI loan officer to get your cash out refinance. But if you're 55 plus, does it make sense to do a traditional cash out refinance with a traditional mortgage term, which is going to be 15, 20, or 30 years, and have a mandatory mortgage payment requirement into your 80s or 90s? I would argue no, right? I would argue in retirement, cash flow is king. And you need to look for ways to lower your expenses and increase your cash flow and keep steady income and revenue sources coming in so that you, you can sustain your retirement lifestyle. So sure, a cash out refinance is relatively easy to get if you have decent credit and decent income. Um, you can borrow more money on a cash out refinance than you could with a reverse mortgage. There's cash out refinances that go all the way up to 90, 95, maybe even 100%. But you, again, you have that mortgage payment, which could derail your retirement lifestyle. Okay, let's talk about a, a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Pretty accessible. You can go into your local bank and get a HELOC. I believe we here at PRMI now offer HELOCs. Okay, you take out a HELOC. It's interest only for 10 years. Uh, maybe you can afford the payment during that 10-year period. But then what? Right? Then what? Then again, you're going to have a monthly mortgage payment. You also have what happened, you know, the risk of what happened in 2008 and 2009. Some of you on here may have had HELOCs in 2008 and 2009 and relied on those to live your retirement or for additional cash flow or for a safety net or an emergency fund. And in 2008 and 2009, during the last economic downturn, you saw a lot of banks suspend, reduce, or freeze those HELOC accounts. We just saw the same thing happen two years ago with the onset of COVID-19. A lot of large lenders and banks said, you know what, we may, we may have $200,000 in a line of credit extended to you, but we're going to go ahead and turn that off, or we're going to reduce it now from two hundred dollars to 25000 um, The bank can do that. The lender can do that at their discretion at any time. With a reverse mortgage loan, however, these loans are federally insured. They are non-recourse, and we'll talk about that in a moment. They can never be suspended, reduced, or frozen, irregardless of the value of your home, regardless of interest rates, regardless of inflation, regardless of the economy. You can borrow on today's value. Let's say your home is valued at $500,000 today. You can take a reverse mortgage out based on $500,000. If next year your home is worth $450,000, because we don't know what's going to happen in the housing market. Nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know if, if values are going to go up or go down. I mean, everything is a little unpredictable right now. If the value of your home changes in a negative way, 
your, your loan is based on your value today, that $500,000. So taking out a reverse mortgage now, you can lock in your equity position and borrow based on today's value and hedge against a future housing market correction um, in the event that the value of your home goes down. It's a very, very savvy uh, idea to take out a reverse mortgage today. Even if you don't need one, we'll get into some payout options here in a moment. You can just kind of park your funds in place, but you can lock in today's value. Reverse mortgages also don't have that mandatory monthly mortgage payment requirement, requirement, oftentimes making them a better solution from a cash flow perspective as folks age comfortably within their own home. So let's talk about types of reverse mortgages. And I know I'm, I'm going through this pretty quickly. Uh, I'm likely to get a little bit quicker because I do want to respect everybody's time and get you out of here within an hour, maybe an hour and 15. Um, so let's get into types of reverse mortgages. We talked about the HECMs or the Home Equity Conversion Mortgages. Um, these are the government reverse mortgage loans. Now let's talk about a reverse mortgage for purchase. Yes, you can actually buy a home with a reverse mortgage. Roughly, the, the, the buyer would have to put down roughly 50% of the sale price with the other 50% covered by the reverse mortgage loan. We see this a lot with prospective cash buyers, right? Particularly in today's economy. Again, we talked about not wanting to pull from your investment portfolios during a down market period. So let's say you're purchasing a, let's just use a, a $400,000 home. You could pay cash for that home, right? But what does that do to your investment portfolio? Taking $400,000 out of that portfolio and applying it towards the purchase of a new home. With a reverse mortgage, you can put down half, $200,000 on average, and that's it. There is no mandatory monthly mortgage payment. There's no payment required whatsoever. You can choose whether you want to make mortgage payments the only obligations are you pay the taxes, you pay the insurance, and you maintain the home. It's a very, very powerful way for folks to purchase a home and leverage their maximum buying power. So for you realtors out there, and I know we have a lot of you, the, qu the burning question in your head, I know right now, can, how long does it take to close these loans? Um, reverse mortgages can close in 30 days. Reverse mortgage purchases can close in 30 days. Uh, new build. Right? We can even do reverse mortgages for new construction. Um, the, the requirements on that are, are very particular. So ask your loan officer um, if, you if you're interested in purchasing a new construction home or if you're a realtor wondering how that can be done, reach out to one of our reverse mortgage professionals. If you were invited here today by one, reach back out to them. If you have any questions uh, and you don't have a contact here at PRMI, you're going to want to email reverse at primeres.com. That is reverse at prime, P-R-I-M-E, res, R-E-S, dot com. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have, uh, talk to you about either a re refinance reverse mortgage or the reverse mortgage for purchase. You also now have a lot of proprietary or non-government reverse mortgage options. These, again, are not insured by the federal government, but they have a lot of the safeguards uh, and regular, you know, a lot of the safeguards and protections in place, for instance, they are non-recourse loans. Um, what does that mean? It means that you, your estate, your heirs are never personally liable for the debt on that loan. Um, with these proprietary loans come jumbo reverse mortgage loans. We can lend up to $3 million on homes valued up to $10 million. And we're seeing a lot of jumbo reverse mortgages come through our pipeline right now. Uh, I think back to one story back in the uh, the onset of COVID, uh, very, very early 2020, uh, a gentleman reached out uh, to us. He lives in Boca Raton, Florida. He is one of the largest breeders of ho uh, racehorses in the entire country, breeds them, and they run in, in very large races. He's had some triple crown races, uh, horse that, horses that he's breeded. Um, so this is a gentleman that was of means, ha was making a good living, uh, has a retirement nest egg, right? Not destitute by any means. A $5 million home right on the intercoastal waterway in Boca. Beautiful home. He came to us because when COVID started, the horse racing industry was shut down. So these owners were not buying racehorses anymore. Well, when you're breeding racehorses, what's your biggest expenditure? It's the food. 
right? He's got to feed these horses. He's got to care for these horses. He's got to pay uh, the people, the folks that come in and help him to take care of these horses. And he was ripping through cash, just burning cash flow. Um, he reached out on his five and a half million dollar home. He owed it, owned it free and clear. We were able to lend him close to two and a half million dollars in a one time lump sum cash payout. And he used that loan to bridge the gap until the horse racing business opened back up. Um, he actually made payments during that time because he wanted to make payments. Uh, so these these jumbo loans are for folks that you would never, you know, 15, 20 years ago have thought would, would be candidates for reverse mortgage loans. A lot of folks that have uh, high home values or higher net worths are turning to reverse mortgage as a savvy financial tool. So let's dive in and talk about how you can actually get this money, right? We've talked about there's $11.2 trillion in housing wealth out there. How can you receive these funds? The first way is by replacing a traditional mortgage, right? So if you have a mortgage that you're paying on now, a reverse mortgage will pay off and replace that mortgage, thereby eliminating that mandatory mortgage payment, freeing up immediate cash flow. Option two is a 10-year payment. A 10-year payment is when you request a monthly check to be sent to you and we send you a check from the equity in your home, right? So if you're somebody that, hey, gosh, boy, life would be a whole lot easier if I just had an extra $800 a month, we can set it up to send you, if you qualify, an $800 check every single month and cure your cash flow problem. There's also a term payment. A term payment is you're, you're taking proceeds over a fixed period of time, five years, 10 years, 20 years, so forth. We see term payments used most often when our clients are referred to us from financial advisors with the goal of delaying social security until they're over 70 years old so they can access a higher social security check. Right? The longer you delay, the more that social security check is. So folks come to us when they're 65 and they take out a term reverse mortgage, where the home from their home equity sends them a check every single month for five years. Then they can turn on Social Security at the that maximum age to qualify for the largest benefits, and then stop receiving a monthly check from the home. They can choose to forego paying back that money that they borrowed until they leave the home, or they can make monthly mortgage payments if their budget allows and pay that money back over time. That's up to that. We also have the lump sum option. I described the lump sum option in the story that I told you just, just a few moments ago. You can take out a lump sum and use it for anything you wish. There's no restrictions on what you do with this money. It's your equity. It's your money. Take it, spend it however you want. A lump sum, we normally see that uh, in repairs, right? You want to upgrade the home. You want to renovate the home. A lot of folks are renovating their homes to make it more conducive to meet their long-term needs. So they're putting in wheelchair lifts. They're, they're lowering their cabinets. I saw a client lower their kitchen cabinets. Um, they were in a wheelchair already. They lowered their cabinets and they lowered their countertops to make them more wheelchair accessible. Um, bathrooms, walk-in tubs, that sort of thing. Uh, so we see the lump sum used oftentimes in those cases. The most powerful way to take out a reverse mortgage is to set up a reverse mortgage line of credit. These function in a very similar fashion to a traditional home equity line of credit. However, with a reverse mortgage line of credit, you have a guaranteed rate of growth, meaning each and every year, your line of credit is increased over time. And it's increased by 0.5%, half of a percent over the interest rate on the loan. A lot of folks right now are seeing, you know, interest rates are in the, the mid fives they're seeing growth rates of 6% or so on that line of credit. Now, it's not interest, it's growth, right? So think of this as your credit card provider sets your, your borrowing limit at $10,000. And each year, they're going to increase that limit, you know, 12,000, 15,000, 20,000, and so forth. A reverse mortgage line of credit works in a very similar fashion. And you can also customize all these options. And we, we do that quite a bit. What we, our, our approach here at PRMI is a very tailored, customized approach. So the first thing that we do, we sit down with our clients. We have discovery sessions. We're going to talk about your goals. We're going to talk about 
what do you, what's your plan now for retirement? Do you have a plan to cover long-term care? Um, what would happen in the event of a care event? Um, what would happen if you ran out of money for health care? Right? We talk about all these things, and I think that really does set us apart from a lot of our competition um, that's a little bit more transactional-based. Right? We really sit down and we come up with a tailored approach. Through coming up with that tailored approach, oftentimes it's a customized solution. And so receiving some money upfront in the form of cash, perhaps turning on a tenure to increase ongoing regular monthly cash flow, perhaps putting some of that money in the line of credit to take advantage of that growth rate. You can combine these payout options to accomplish whatever the borrower's goals are. And that's certainly what we do. And that's what we pride ourselves on here at PRMI. So now in this part of the presentation, we're going to get through some of the uh, the myths and realities of reverse mortgages. And we're going to talk about some case studies as we go. Um, the, the first myth is that interest rates are higher on reverse mortgages than on traditional mortgage loans. And that's just not the case, right? Interest rates on reverse mortgages are on par with traditional mortgage rates. Like I said, you know, Going, ongoing rate right now is about five and a half percent. You have a fixed rate option, you have adjustable rate options, and that's the same whether it's a an FHA government insured reverse mortgage or one of these proprietary loans that we have now. You have fixed and variable rate options, but the rates are really not no higher than a traditional mortgage loan. So that's a myth. The bank, the bank either will take my home or owns my home, and that's not true at all. Right, reverse mortgages are loans. They're just a mortgage. Right? The bank doesn't own your home. You own the home as the homeowner. It's your home. A reverse mortgage is simply that. It's just a mortgage. It's a mortgage, however, that provides you greater flexibility. Proceeds have to be taken as a lump sum. We just covered that with the payout options. That's certainly not the case. You can customize payout options to accomplish your needs. These are non-recourse loans. That means that you are not personally liable. Your estate is not personally liable. Your heirs are not personally liable to pay off any debt. So let's let's talk about a, a, a scenario here. Let's say you have a two hundred thousand dollar reverse mortgage. You borrowed that when your home was worth four hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you choose to forego making mortgage payments, meaning your balance is going to increase every month. And that's important to point out, right? With a reverse mortgage loan, you have the option to not make a mortgage payment but that means that your balance is going to increase over time. You're deferring payback until you leave the home. A lot of folks got familiar with the term deferment or the concept of deferment when we've we've all gone through COVID-19 and mortgage lenders made deferment a possibility for most folks in America that had some sort of COVID-related hardship. Um, so you're putting money on the back end of the loan and you're deferring that money. And reverse mortgage really is just a big deferment plan. Right? You're saying, I don't want to pay this money now. It's not conducive for my lifestyle or my needs to pay this now. So I'm going to forego making that payment and the loan will get paid off when I leave the home. Well, let's say the value of your home decreases while your balance is increasing. If you ever get to a position where you owe more on your reverse mortgage than the value of the home, again, you're not personally liable for that overage. Think of it like gap insurance for your car. Right, reverse mortgages function very in a very similar way to gap insurance, and in that you you total your car, you owe thirty thousand dollars. The insurance company gives you a check for twenty thousand dollars. That ten thousand dollar gap is covered by your gap insurance if you purchase gap insurance. Reverse mortgages have a type of gap insurance on them, um, which ensures that you will not owe, you will not be personally liable for the debt over and above um, the value of the home at the time of sale. Independent HUD counseling is required on all reverse mortgages, whether they are HECMs, the government reverse mortgage, or proprietary reverse mortgage. There's a safeguard put in place to protect borrowers. All borrowers have to take a counseling session. Counseling session lasts anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour, and that counselor is an independent third party. They, they don't care whether you enter into a reverse mortgage or not. 
they're one going to make sure that you are of cognitive ability. They're going to make sure that you're of able mind to make a, a you know well-informed financial decision. And they're also going to be there to help answer questions. They're going to go through some of the numbers with you. They're going to make sure that you understand the, the financial product that you're getting into. So that's an additional safeguard that, uh, that is a reality of reverse mortgage loans. Now, again, back to you realtors uh, and financial advisors, because we, we actually get more reverse purchase referrals from financial advisors than we do realtors, because the one thing that financial advisors want to do more than anything is they want to preserve money, right? preserve their assets under management, preserve the, re the retirement accounts of their clients. Um, and the reverse purchase is a great way to do that. So I want to talk to you about um, a little case study here. These are the Wellings. The Wellings wanted to purchase a home for four. Their, their current home is worth $400,000, okay? They have a mortgage balance of $100,000. Their monthly mortgage payment is $1,200 a month. The age of the youngest borrower is age 64. So with a reverse mortgage, it the way that you determine how much money you can get is based on the age of the youngest borrower prevailing interest rates at the time and the appraised value of the home. So in this case, uh, Mrs. Welling is age 64. Okay, here's what they did. Here's the numbers. They purchased a new home with a reverse mortgage on a home with one floor, right? It was more conducive to meet their, their long-term needs uh, to age comfortably in place. They put down $150,000. Now remember, their home was worth $400,000, the home that they were exiting. They sell that home. They owed $100,000. They paid off that $100,000. Now they're left with $300,000. Well, of that $300,000, they took half of that, and they put a down payment down on a new home, which was $300,000. They had free cash flow of $150,000 and no monthly mortgage payment required. What did the Wellings do? They turned around and they purchased a single premium long-term care policy, which cost them roughly $100,000 at their age. They supplemented their retirement portfolio with $50,000. Right, so look at these results. They moved into their forever home. They funded long-term care, which was a concern of theirs. They supplemented their retirement nest egg with $50,000. They increased their monthly cash flow by $1,200. They eliminated their $1,200 mortgage payment that they paid on the home that they were exiting. And they have peace of mind for the rest of their life. They moved into the home that is more conducive for their needs. They funded long-term care. They freed up cash flow. This was the perfect scenario, which is why I had to include it in today's presentation. This is the power of the reverse mortgage purchase opportunity. Right. So if you're a realtor out there, if you're a financial advisor, right, your ears should be perked right now. We are closing a lot of reverse mortgage purchases. Uh, we specialize in that here. We're very quick. We're very efficient. Give us an opportunity. Right. Uh, if you have folks that are of age and these days, that age is, could be 55, depending on the state that you live in. This could be a very viable alternative to your client paying cash or taking out a mortgage and then being saddled with a monthly mortgage payment at the later stages of life. Reverse mortgages today, we, we as an industry, us here at PRMI, we are changing the conversation about reverse mortgages. You know, we're doing that by holding events like this. We're doing that by educating the masses. We're changing the way that reverse mortgages are looked at because reverse mortgages deserve that. They are an incredible financial product that, that just gets a bad rap and they get a bad rap oftentimes because of the things that happened in the past, right? Folks getting foreclosed on because they, they used the reverse mortgage when it was already too late. They tried to put a Band-Aid on an open wound and, and it just doesn't work that way, right? So now in today's day and age, 2022, and gosh, it'll be 2023 before we know it, reverse mortgages are used as a well-rounded financial tool, right? heavily regulated, lots of borrower safeguards put in place, but they just may be the key to either you or your client or a loved one living a better retirement lifestyle. And that is what it's all about. It's about results and it's about peace of mind. And before we open up the Q&A, 
and wrap up today's presentation, I want to share this picture on the screen here. Um, a lot of you that work here at PRMI know this story. These are my parents, right? My parents took out their reverse mortgage uh, almost three years ago now, and it was the, the best financial decision that they ever made. Um, and what's funny is <laughs> I've been in the reverse mortgage space for a long time, almost 15 years now. And, uh, you know, my mom and dad, they, they've heard me preach about reverse mortgages and they've seen my media interviews and they've heard me talk about it a million times, but even they still had a lot of the same misconceptions about what a reverse mortgage is, or gosh, we're not broke. So why are we taking out a reverse mortgage? And through the consultation of their financial planner who recommended that they take out a reverse mortgage, they discovered that if they use their home equity, which in their case is a large portion, the predominant portion of their net worth, right? For a lot of you folks out there today, the same holds true. Your housing wealth, look at the appreciation that you've seen in recent years. It is a very large portion, if not the largest portion of your net worth. And so when they were able to bring that into the retirement planning equation, use the housing wealth in conjunction with their other assets, right? They're able to live a, a much more secure, a safer retirement with financial security and peace of mind. Um, they've renovated their home. They, they upgraded their kitchen. They painted the home. They changed the floors. They've turned the home into the place that they want to live in for the rest of their lives. And they funded that in large part with the reverse mortgage without the mandatory obligation of a monthly mortgage payment. So they just did probably thirty, maybe $40,000 of work to their home to turn that home into the home that they never want to leave. They've padded their investment portfolio. So they're covered for long-term care, right? They're covered in case there's a health crisis, God forbid. Um, they really took care of themselves and put themselves in a really great and powerful position because of the reverse mortgage. Because without bringing this home equity into the equation, they could have never done these things. They would never have a long-term care plan. They wouldn't have been able to renovate the home. They wouldn't really have enjoyed living in this home long-term. The reverse mortgage did wonders for them. And I know wholeheartedly, I know that it could do wonders for you, your clients, your buyers. Um, it, it's a very underutilized, but unbelievably powerful tool. Um, so I'm going to wrap it at that. Folks, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today, for taking the time, for joining us. Again, if you were invited by a PRMI loan originator and you have questions you want to know if a reverse mortgage works for you or your client, reach back out to the person who invited you. And if you don't have a contact here at PRMI, we would love to welcome you into the PRMI family um, and set up a consultation to at least just discuss your goals, further educate you, and uh, give you the ability to decide whether a reverse mortgage is right for you. And you can reach out to us at reverse at primeres.com, reverse at prime. P R I M E res R E S dot com. Uh, George, I'm going to turn it over to you for some Q and A. Yeah. Well, thank you, Stephen. That was a wonderful, informative. Uh, it was uh, thorough, and we got lots of questions already. And we actually answered quite a few questions offline already uh, for folks who had some really great uh, questions that they were asking. But we do have a few more. Uh, Stephen, if you have a minute or so to uh, kind of go through these, I'll just uh, I'll throw a couple of the basic ones uh, yeah. that have come up. Here's the here's a basic question for you: um, What types of properties can I do a reverse mortgage on? Yes, you can do a reverse mortgage on a one to four unit property, uh, manufactured homes as well. There's some parameters there, so reach out to us to find out if your manufactured home qualifies. Uh, awesome. Again. These proprietary loans, we can lend all the way up to a home valued at $10 million, um, you know, double wides, uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah. And, single you know, family the, homes, condominiums, if the condominium is FHA approved. That's that's what I was going to say. It's, you know, anytime you have uh, any property where you can do FHA financing, you can do an FHA home equity conversion mortgage. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, here's another question is... Uh, I've been brought to the understanding that fees and commissions can be high. Is that so? That's a, you know, I, I'm glad that question came up. Um, I think there is a, a misunderstanding that the fees on reverse mortgages are exorbitant or that they're, right. they're so much more than a traditional mortgage. 
If you're looking at a HECM, a home equity conversion mortgage, those are FHA insured loans. There is a mortgage insurance premium, an FHA mortgage insurance premium paid on those loans. That premium equates to 2% of the appraised value. Okay. So yeah, if you have a, a $500,000 home or a, a $600,000 home, the insurance, which is paid up front, it can be financed into the loan. That, that should be taken into consideration. And then we look at the risk, I mean, not the risk reward, the, the, the benefit factors, right? I mean, what is the benefit of the loan? What is the long-term benefit, right? Yeah, maybe it's going to cost $15,000 in mortgage right. insurance premium or $10,000 in mortgage insurance premium, but what is the end result? And so yeah. that is what we do here. We, we, we're going to work up the scenario. We're going to tell you what the fees are, of course, and then we're going to go over the results to see if it's, if it's worth it. I have uh, some borrowers, uh, the homeowners that are here. Um, I'm already speaking as if they're borrowers, right? We're trying to take care of people all the time. Um, uh, one of the questions that they have is, can I use the money that I get from a reverse mortgage for whatever I want? Let's say I want to buy an investment property or a vacation home. Can I use it for that? There, there's no, it's your money, right? So there's no restrictions on what you can do with that money. Um, you know, if if you plan on buying a uh, an annuity or any kind of uh, securitized financial product, we do ask that as a part of the application, and that has to be documented. But otherwise, there, there's no restrictions whatsoever. This is your wealth; right. it just happens to be locked between your four walls. And so, right. one, the proceeds that you're going to get are tax free. There's no taxes paid on money borrowed. Right. A whole other um, conversation. That's and there's also no there's no restrictions us. at all right. on yeah. what you can do with the money. Uh, another thank you for answering. There's just a few more questions. Thanks for, for staying with us and answering these questions, Stephen. Um, another uh, question here is if you could go over the withdrawal rate risk uh, again, right? The risk of withdrawing from your portfolio right now. Uh, can you go over that sure. in, in brief a little bit, please? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, withdrawal rate risk and sequence of returns risk are, are kind of cousins. Right. If you have money in your investment portfolio, right, and that portfolio is a diminishing portfolio right now, you're not seeing gains in the market, um, or it's just not growing at the rate that it was over the past few years, it's very important not to overdraw out of that investment portfolio, right? You want to keep as much money in there to allow the portfolio an opportunity to recover during uh, bull markets. And, and you want to be very, very careful during bear markets about pooling money from a diminishing portfolio, right? If, you're, if you saw your portfolio decrease 10% over, over the past year, and you need to pool 5 to 10% to live your normal lifestyle, pretty certain you're, gonna, you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're perhaps going to put yourself in a situation where you could deplete that portfolio um, and outlive your money. And so when it comes to withdrawal rate risk, Right? We don't really know how much we can draw safely. There's a lot of companies out there that advertise on TV. What's your number? What's your number? Well, we don't know what our number is because nobody has a crystal ball to know how long we're going to live. What we do know through advanced research from folks like Wade Fowl, and I would encourage you, Google Wade Fowl, um, Google Jamie Hopkins. Right, These are uh, titans of the financial services industry. And, and through their research, they discovered that you can use a reverse mortgage safely, strategically, in a very savvy manner to bring in your home wealth into the equation and limit the amount that you're pulling out of your investment portfolio. And that will extend the overall lifespan of your nest egg. Great. Thank you. That's good. A lot of people don't understand a lot of the uh, conversation around financial planning and whatnot. So that was really good. And sure. we're getting a lot of thank yous. We're getting a lot of people commenting, saying that was such a refreshing approach to understanding reverse mortgages. They have a lot to consider and whatnot. So thanks again for doing that. Um, uh, here's a question about a purchase. Since you were speaking about purchases, uh, let's say that uh, my bar, my uh, buyer, let's say I'm a real estate agent, Stephen, and my buyer doesn't quite have the income to qualify. Can they maybe go find a co-signer to make a purchase with a reverse mortgage? So I would, I would answer this in two parts. So one, if they don't qualify for a traditional mortgage, a traditional mortgage, chances are they could qualify for a reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgages have a completely different income qualification. We use 
residual income, we call it RI in the industry, as opposed to debt to income ratio or DTI in the traditional mortgage space. And so uh, folks need considerably less income in most cases to qualify for a reverse mortgage. The question, can you go out and get a co-borrower? Well, you can, you can certainly have a co-borrower. Um, they have to be of age to qualify for the reverse mortgage, and they have to occupy the home with you as the primary, as their primary residence. And that's key too. Right. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, somebody wants to know a little bit more about the line of credit growth, right? It's a, such a unique thing uh, in any kind of mortgage. Would you explain uh, how the credit line grows? You mentioned that it grows by 0.5%. Uh, can yeah, you share it, a little bit more about that? It, it, whenever I bring that up, I, I get, what do you mean? How is that? How is that possible? How how can that be? It is yeah. a it is a a feature of the reverse mortgage that the line of credit has a guaranteed growth rate feature, and that growth rate feature again is guaranteed if the economy goes south or rates go up or the the value of their home goes down. That growth rate cannot be taken away from you. This is the only mortgage that has this feature. The only home equity mortgage that has this feature. Mm -hmm. And, and not only does the line of credit have that growth rate, and we'll get back to that in a moment, but again, it can never be suspended, reduced, or frozen. And, and in an economy that's in a little bit of turmoil, that is key. You need to make sure that line of credit is going to be there. Back to the growth rate. The growth rate as of today on the HECM reverse mortgage, the government reverse mortgage, is a half percent over the interest rate. Right. So if you have an interest rate of five and a half, you're getting a six percent rate of growth, meaning that compounding annually, year over year, your line of credit is going to increase. If you reach out to us and, and we provide you with a proposal, in that proposal will be what's called an amortization schedule. And it's going to show you in plain English and simple math, right, right on one single sheet of paper, here's what your line of credit is going to start at. And assuming you don't use it, right, because that's what we can't predict. We don't know how much you're going to draw out. But let's say you don't use it. Here's how much it's going to grow in five years and 10 years and 20 years and so forth. And the number is staggering because, again, it's not just growth. It's compounding growth. That is, I mean, there, there's no other financial tool like this on the market and not nearly enough folks understand yeah. how this line of credit works. It's an extremely powerful tool. Yeah, it is. It's a uh, it's. It's, it's unheard of, really, when, when you can actually uh, have a line of credit that grows instead of it. And, and it doesn't get, it doesn't have the risk of it being canceled, reduced, or frozen, right? That sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, here's a question for you, Steve. Um, does the borrower or co-borrower have to currently be on title? And if so, for how long? Does the borrower or co-borrower, so currently, no. Uh, if you're, I'm assuming you're talking about a buying situation, right? Adding no, a co-borrower so, yeah. uh, or adding a co-buyer. It's how it sounds to me. Um, so no, I mean, in that case, nobody would be on title. Now, if you're in a home currently that has a traditional mortgage and you want to take out a reverse mortgage and you want to add somebody onto title, we can of course do that through the settlement of the loan. Gotcha. Do we need a good FICO score to qualify? That's a great question. Uh, with the FHA government reverse mortgages, they're FHA, so they are not credit score driven. Um, right. The credit parameters, also easier to qualify in a lot of cases over a traditional mortgage loan that perhaps will have a minimum credit score requirement or um, you know, minimum trade line requirement, that sort of thing. With reverse mortgages, it's pretty simple. We are looking at your ability and your willingness to meet the obligations of the loan, which are the taxes, the insurance, and just the general maintenance and upkeep of the home. Right. Um, so I, I would say if you if you looked into a traditional mortgage and you were turned away or turned down because of credit or because of credit score particularly, and you're over the age of 55, reach out to us here at PRMI. It's a good chance that you can qualify for a reverse mortgage loan. All right, here we got about two more questions and then we'll be done. We still have uh, over 100 people here waiting and kind of taking it all in and and lots of questions. I have one here from a realtor. The question is, uh, does the three-day right of rescission still exist with a reverse mortgage for purchase that you would normally find on a traditional purchase? 
right? So reverse mortgage purchases are table funded, right? So they're going to fund immediately that day. Gotcha. Table funded. Uh, gotcha. Perfect. Um, another question here. All right. If you have a, it sounds like we have some very specific loan specific scenarios uh, from PRMI team members. Let's go ahead and have you guys send those in to reverse at primeres.com so we can dig into the scenarios themselves, right? And instead of uh, doing it here in a public forum. Uh, let's see, there is another question that I saw here, Stephen. I think it's the last one. Um, can I deduct the interest charges for income tax purposes? It's another great question. It really, so check with your CPA or, or tax advisor on that. Um, we're not tax professionals by any means. Uh, the proceeds that you receive are non-taxable. Um, with the interest, if you're, it, it really depends on if you're making a monthly mortgage payment, right? right? Because again, right. with a reverse mortgage, there's no payment requirement. So there may not be any interest to speak of on an annual basis because you're not right. making that mortgage payment. Right, exactly. If you don't pay a mortgage payment, there's no interest to deduct, right? But if you exactly. choose to make payments, like you said, with the flexible options, then those payments will have interest that's available for a deduction. I want to remind everybody that if you were invited by somebody from the PRMI team or one of the PRMI divisions that is out there, please reach out to them. Uh, so many of you have sent in comments about uh, how enlightening this was and really how refreshing it was to hear this. Uh, so please reach out to them, ask them your questions, engage them, have a little discussion about what you heard here today, maybe about what intrigued you or what you think. Uh, if you are a business partner, uh, also invited by one of the PRMI team members, please reach out to your uh, person who invited you and they'd be happy to help you. Any general questions you can send to reverse at primeres.com and we'd be able to help you or point you back to the person who invited you, of course. Uh, again, thank you everybody so much. Uh, we will uh, be looking forward to seeing you again in future uh, presentations. And Stephen, again, thank you for taking time away from your busy schedule and all the things you're doing out there and the difference that you're making in people's lives, both homeowners and business professionals who you've been able to help over the many, many years, 20 years in the industry. So thank you for doing that. Thanks for your time. And uh, if you have any last words, uh, this will be it. I appreciate that, George. It's, uh, it's, it's just a pleasure every day working with you and our amazing team members here at PRMI. So grateful to be a part of this organization, this, this great company that we have the ability to, to work at and, and love what we do and uh, you know come to work with a smile on our face every day because we, we are truly helping folks to create and sustain a better retirement. So for those of you who joined us here today, wholeheartedly, I say thank you to you. Reach out to us here at PRMI. We would love to help uh, you, a loved one, a client. And until next time, thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.